You're with Pastor Troy right here. We're getting excited. We got a special program for you. You're going to be seeing over the next few weeks until we get ready for season two, you're going to be seeing the best of the On the Dock season one. These will be coming at you hard and steady. I want you to get them out there, check them out, help us get them out to your friends. We want to see you on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes as well. But this is the best of, get this, the best of season one. Get ready for it. We're going to be coming at you with a super season two coming up this August. We'll see you soon. Enjoy this episode of On the Dock season one. Best of. You're on the dock here with Pastor Troy. What a great song. Way to go. Colt's in the seat that right now, our wonderful producer for the day. We're glad to have you in the house, Colt, on the, on the boards today. We've had a great time on this podcast series. We want to really appreciate Bill Long for being in here. He came in here and did a little work here, did a little yeoman work with the Zoom stuff, and he's getting ready to go on vacation. We appreciate Bill and Alexis. You guys mean so much to us. And Lucas, wherever you are in the world on vacation, hope you're enjoying it. We, we don't miss you. But we did for a little while, but we don't now because we got Colt in the seat today. We're here at On the Dock. We're glad to have you join us for this next great episode. We're all about conversations to propel your faith out of the shallows and into the deep. We're glad you're joining us. It's going to be an incredible ride. This is our big show. You're going to love it. You're with us now or you wouldn't be seeing me or hearing me. And so but we want to tell you about all of our podcast platform partners, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes. Go find more than one of those. And we also have these auxiliary partners, Google Podcasts, Facebook, Roku. you got a Roku TV. You can download the Sermon That app. Look up the On the Dock with Pastor Troy channel. You can watch us right on your TV at home. You can do that on YouTube as well. And Rumble. You can download the Rumble app too on most smart TVs. Watch us there. Sermonet app can also be downloaded. Watch it on computers. And we, uh, we'd we love to have you there. Sermonet will also work on your phone as well. And you can see our whole archives of all our shows on Sermonet, also on YouTube. And there's a link to that on our website. You can find out more about that in just a minute. We'd love to hear you shout out to us through our social media partners, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Telegram. I, I hope you'll just give us some words. Always make sure they're nice they can be critical in comments but but do it in a friendly manner we want to hear your input we want to hear your comments about things that we're talking about and uh, we'd love to talk to you about that and chat back at you so when you find our platforms hit subscribe like notify share and we want to connect with you and most of all share it with your friends let other people get on the dock with us and when you're going to get on the dock by the way you want to become an on the dock partner with pastor troy go to patreon download the patreon app look up on the dock with pastor troy and hey, hey here you go colt give me a shot right here of this if you become a patreon sponsor partner We'll get you one of these on the dock with Pastor Troy Cups as a bonus. So find us out. If you can't figure out how to download that app and you're like me, go to onthedock.org. There's links to all our platforms, to Patreon, Embedded Player. Haley has even set up to she'll show you how to get to our archives even. You can watch all our stuff. So go check that out. Be a part of the team here on the dock here. And we are ready to go. Locked and loaded for a great episode. All right, let me just look around the table here. At this episode, we have back to the far right, we have Haley Odalini back there in the back there. Look at that shout, oh, shout yeah. out there. Haley's there. Haley is our, our wonderful person on the dock. She done, does a lot of our graphics and design. She is a big part of our church. Her husband's our worship leader, designed the set. But mostly Haley is here today as our co-host, and she is a part of the Mosaic Initiative. Yes. Yeah, check out that podcast. If it's not up now, it'll be up real soon. And check it out. She's got an incredible organization that's helping also fight the sex trafficking industry here, but also making people aware of other partners around the world. It's a great organization doing a lot of things. Check that out at the mosaicinitiative.org. Go check that out. Across the table from me is my co-host, all the way hailing from Singapore on to Boston, Massachusetts. And then guess what? She's at Harvard College. What a smart girl it is. It's <laughs> Ruth Jane Subicate. Ruth, welcome to On the Dock Again. Thank you so much. She flew in here on the Cape Air can. She came in, landed in a nine-seat plane. How many people were on the plane? Uh, I think there were six passengers. Six passengers, total. a full oh, load wow. on the nine. Yeah, her parents had a heart attack when they found out how she got here. Yep. But it's a fun ride. You get to see everything. She came from Nashville, Tennessee. I did. Check this all out. We're going to get her back out of here. When we when you take off from here, you know, we're in southern Illinois. We're a little backwards. Uh, we don't actually use the engine to take off at safe fuel. We just use a big slingshot. We'll 
fire you out. I'm looking forward to it's it. It's a lot of rubber bands. We back you up, fire you out, and get you back to Nashville, <laughs> back to Harvard College. Ruth is in here working with us. She is. She kind of connected with us, finding out about what we do at Community Faith Church, our Hands Hope Foundation, our partnership with Tamar Center in, uh, in, in, in Pattaya. And she's doing a study and getting ready to do some writing on the work of sex trafficking and the relationship to U.S. churches. So she's here checking us out. And yeah. she's and I shanghaied her. I shanghaied her into my co-host for all these. And we're doing all these episodes on on. Sex don't traffic. Let my parents hear that. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. I'm so to, to your dad, you've got a wonderful daughter. Your family. She's a wonderful delight to have at the house. And if you ever get tired of her, she can always come stay with us. We <laughs> we love to have you here in Southern Thank Illinois. You. She has flown over us many times, and she's never landed in the middle of God's country. You're here in God's country right now. <laughs> get ready. All wow. right. Yeah. So glad to have you here. And on and we're getting ready for uh, part four, our round table discussion. We're going to talk a little bit about partnership with Community Faith Church and how we got connected to Tamar Center, just to give you some information and background that you can do stuff. We're not a big church, church of no more than a couple hundred people at best. And uh, we are partnered with many churches we've established in Thailand, Liberia, and around the world. We are a church that is very horizontally big. We may not be vertically tall, but we're very horizontally big. We have a huge missions heart and we don't just give money, we go do it with them. So we, everybody we're talking to, I've spent a lot of time with Steffi and Daniel over the years, multiple, multiple trips, multiple times a year. And the churches we've planted in Patia are community of faith churches. I am their senior pastor. I am the chief elder for those churches and we, they are us and we are them and we are in this together. We are the family of God. And so it's an honor to work with Steffi and Daniel. They're one of our elders at our church. Let me show you this picture here. This is a picture of our church partnership, uh, the third Roy road, soy six, also our partners, through hand to hand at the Gopai, Tepperset, Kaltalo. We also have a church in Nong, uh, small groups that meet out of Nong Pru. And um, I'm trying to think of the, there's one more now. So we've got great partners there and we just thank God for them. The churches that we work with, Soy Six and Third Row, are under uh, St uh, Steffi and Daniel's watch eye as our elders there. And they're great leaders. Up in that picture, you see Daniel and Steffi to the right. To the left, that's Margie Granger. Margie is the director of hand to hand and our elder over those churches. Below that, you see four pictures, six pictures. And that's our pastor knock having church through Zoom because of COVID. So our pastors are all doing that. They're being very creative. And even though there's a, a pandemic going on, they are still feeding the sheep and connecting with their people. Our church, Community Faith Church, is all about, listen to this, connecting people as faithful followers of Christ. And that's happening here, Thailand, and even in Liberia. We are doing that work, and our pastors are just incredible, and I'm so proud of them. We're talking with Daniel Steffi. Daniel Steffi, Vapo, are you out there? Yes, yeah. hello. Th hello. Thanks for sticking with us. Daniel was with us in the first show, and then Steffi joined us in show two and three. And we had a little bit of audio in, in show two, but we've got it five by five now, and we're ready to go here. So, guys, thank you for joining us. I'm just going to do a quick introduction to these guys. Daniel and Steffi are our great friends. They're not good friends. They're great friends. They're our best friends overseas that we have in the world. Um, I, I consider them family, and we just love being with them and working with them and also just vacationing, and they're just our friends. And so they're going to have a lot to offer you. They, they are involved in one of the most richest and powerfulest ministries in the world, not rich in the sense of money. They need your money, but the richest and powerful because they're, they're liberating, <laughs> they're liber, liberating daughters caught in exploitation and setting the captives free and putting these ladies back on a path so that God can use them and get them to what he really wanted to begin with. God has a plan for every person in this planet. He has a desire that every person know the goodness of it. And sometimes people get caught in things of their own sort, of not of their own sort, but God has a way of rescuing us and delivering us. He did this for the time of Moses. He did this in the time of Christ. He did this for me and everybody in this room that's a Christian and a child of God. We have all been delivered of our own sins, of our own traps, of the world's sins and the things that are put on us. We can be set free through a relationship with Jesus Christ. And uh, hopefully you'll hear that. I want to show you something real quick. Um, D Daniel Steffi hail from T Patia, Thailand. Uh, they're actually from Germany, but they're working overseas. Patia, Thailand is about 15 kilometers along the Gulf of Thailand, about 100 miles from Bangkok. And it is a place that gets between 6 and 12 million tourists a year when COVID is not in session. It's an incredible. Yeah, it's an incredible city. You can go to the best malls in the world there, the finest shopping centers, the best movie theaters I've ever seen uh, anywhere in the world, uh, 4D, 3D, every experience you can. But then they've got this whole other scene, this nightlife, this bar life. It's a Katie Bar the Door city for every uh, carnal desire that you want. If you've seen it on a movie, if you've seen it, one of these rotten things where they, they every kind of a form of 
carnalness you can find in Patia. Patia is a, a industry place where people go to lose themselves in that world. And it doesn't mean we've been talking about that all the people are bad. People in Thailand are wonderful people, kind people. There's a lot of normal people, but Patia is the New Orleans and uh, Las Vegas and Atlantic City and you name three other places, add them all together. And uh, that's Patia. It's a, it's a really interesting place. And Daniel Steffi's uh, ministry, their mission is all about Tamar Center offering hope healing and a new life to the bar girls in that region. They're helping get people out of that industry and onto a new life. Uh, and we're going to talk about that new life here in just a second. So uh, D Daniel, Steffi, as, as, I hope everybody listen. We'll go back and listen to the first three sessions and catch up on that. But I want to dig into something. Uh, one of the things that you told uh, told me uh, on episode one was you, you, re you referenced to us a movie called A Love Betrayed. A Love Betrayed, if you want to check that out and learn about this, it's a 60-minute movie put out by, it was put out, let me tell you, by CBNCM, uh, that's a, a Thai-based uh, organization, and YWAM Thailand. It's a, it's a well-produced 60-minute video. It's in multiple languages, but that you go find the one that's in Thai with English subtitles. You, you don't need the subtitles to know what's happening. You can listen to the Thai. Just watch it. You'll see. But it will help you understand how... Daniel and Steffi connect with people in Patia that have, have gotten into the exploitation business of sex trafficking. It will show you how they are brought from the northern part of the country by many different means and how they get into that industry and what happens at the bottom of that barrel. And it is an eye-opening uh, video. So I just want to take just a real quick second, and I want to show you. Daniel, it's a 60-minute film. The link, again, is alovebetrayed.org. Go check it out on YouTube. Go to YouTube. You can find it that way by searching for it. But I want to show you the the one minute and 59 second trailer to it just as a tease because I think everybody in Southern Illinois, everybody in the world that's got a heart for this needs to go look at this and see what's going on. And then, by the way, all of you people, we talked about this last episode, if you're thinking about getting your little group to go do a trip over to Patia because you want to go get your groove on, you watch this and see that you are what's drawing these things out and you do not want to be a part of that. So check this out and see uh, the result of what happens here. Yeah, that's a love betrayed, a love betrayed.org. You can find it on YouTube as well. And I want you to understand that when you get up into anywhere in the region of Thailand, you go out there, there are parents that are just parents. There are kids that are just kids. They're in school, they're having a good time. And 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 by some method, many different ways, kids are are tricked, families are deceived, sometimes just the lure of the lights in the city. Uh sometimes sold into this, uh, bad circumstances, social economic needs, people reach out and do things. And next thing you know, what looks like a glamor job ends up being a devastating job. In that movie, you have two best friends that get sold off separately, end up one of her best friend dies. She dies. She, the abuse is so bad. She dies. She never gets home. The other one gets home 
and is able to be restored. And it just tells you that through the power of Christ, there is a way out. And I think this movie is incredible. It's a good look at it. And you may think, well, it's just a movie. I promise you, I've spent many, many days and days and days. I have probably been in Thailand for almost as much as a year since 2015 because I go for 30 days at a time when I go. And and I'm going to tell you, I have heard story after story just like this from the girls that Daniel and Steffi work with at Tamar Center. This is not a movie. This is a docudrama that shows the reality of a life. Daniel and Steffi, uh, you're out there. Can you, can you tell us, is what we're seeing, I know it's a docudrama, is this the reality of what you see at the other end in Pattaya? Yes, it is. The situation is exactly as the movie describes it. You you literally have people come there and no telling. I mean, because while we were there on one of the previous trips, one of the girls that was getting abused actually was thrown out of the window. The guy's hyped up. He's on drugs. She's on drugs. And the next thing you know, she's thrown out of the balcony. She lands on the ground, of course, dies. And they did find in her pocket. What was that, Daniel, they found? They found the card from our English classes and the police came and we were able to identify the woman and tell the police in which bar she worked. And so they couldn't, were able to connect to her family. Were they ever able to capture the guy, the cat, cat, capture the guy that did this? Do they know? Yes, he was captured um, and he was then uh, released and sent back to the UK where he was also facing charges. And now, um, as far as we know, is still in the UK in prison. Oh, praise God. I hope he's in prison for a long time. Was he on drugs? What what caused this? What what happened? Do you know? We are not sure. It's probably an argument between the two of them. There were drugs involved, yeah. so things get out of control. So there's no romance. This is not a romantic thing. This is not a happy ending. This is not live long and prosper. This is not, I think the lure of this is what's so scary is that it looks attractive. You saw in the movie, the woman there is, she's she's the uh, agent. She is the, the, the provocateur. She's making it look attractive, but they find out on the other side, it's not what they thought there. So let, hey, I, I've got a, we got a tough question for you guys. This could be the toughest question of the show. I'll try to get tougher ones. But Ruth's from Harvard, so she's designed to give the toughest questions known to man. That is our school of school. She's of the Ivy of Ivy of the Iviest. Um, oh I, you boy. know, yeah, yeah. But, but Ivy she, of the Ivy. Yeah, I want to let her give you this question because I think let me say let me say up front in defense. Uh, I'm gonna say in defense, and I'm a, as a pastor since I'm a pastor in the room. Uh, I'm gonna throw ourselves under the bus. The church does amazing things. The Lord Jesus Christ through churches does amazing things. I am proud of the work we've been able to do around the world, but I'm always conscious of the work that sometimes the church does the most dam damaging things. That a church that maybe has, we talked about in one of the other podcasts, good yeah. intentions, but they're not godly intentions. They're good intentions, but they're not informed intentions. They're good intentions, but they're not fully developed. And they've not apprenticed and journeyman. They've not learned the culture. They've not spent time in the process. And so they go in and they drive a God-sized peg right through the hearts of people thinking it's going to help them. But guys, we're not trying to kill vampires. We're not trying to kill vampires. This isn't a Twilight. We talked about Twilight. Day. This isn't a Twilight film. We're talking about the, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. This, these are these are human beings. These are children of God. And 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 guys, the one thing we all have is a free will to decide. As for me and myself, will I serve God? Will I be a part of this? It's my soul, my spirit, and God loves me so much that He gave me that choice. Jesus dying on the cross gave me the choice to decide how I want to live my life. And I have a right to live. You have a right to go out and be crazy and do stuff and, and live your life the way you want to. But you also have a right to reap the, the rewards of whatever that is, the wages of sin or the gift of God. You also have the ability to make choices. I, I, there can be times when people of good faith do things that embarrass us, that become almost as bad as, what, 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 do, we, what do they call the woman that went up there and recruited people? What was her name? What, what do they call that style? They're... Um, What's the word? Uh, they're like recruiters or, or, or I'm trying to think of the aunties that go up. We can almost, I, I just want to hear, Ruth has a good take on this. So Ruth's going to talk to you about this. Go ahead, Ruth. <laughs> okay. Oh, you um, in there? Yeah, well, you, you've, you've done a little bit of the, the exposition, but I think my, basically, uh, as I've been doing my own research, what I'm coming across is that when you're in this line of work, as, if you're a Christian organization, that oftentimes the line between like, evangelizing and wanting to share the gospel and actually being able to carry out the work that you do and helping people get out of a precarious situation can get very blurred. And it can often become a thing where it's like, 
uh, you know, we require you to do these classes or we require you to, to do so-and-so that that's related to becoming a Christian in order to, you know, be a part of this program in order to receive our services. And when you're in a situation that's so desperate and you're coming out of it, someone's offering you help. It can often feel like an obligation to take part in that, an obligation to, you know, say that you've accepted Christ so that you don't lose, um, you know, this lifeline out of, out of that lifestyle. And so I, I think, you know, it's been shown in like many different cases that that can often become very problematic for Christian organizations who are, you know, not, not forcing, but basically like re- putting requirements on the, t- the type of trading one form of bondage for a new form. I mean, yeah, yeah. So can you guys speak to that? And I, when you get done, I'm going to share some insight I have too into that because as she was talking, the Lord really kind of showed me because my doctorate is in evangelism. So my doctorate's in church development evangelism. And I have, I'll have some words about that too to some of our colleagues out there. But go ahead, Daniel and Stephanie, please answer her question. Yeah, that's, I think, one of the really tough questions to, to answer. Um, I think our motivation for doing what we are doing is... Jesus and his love for us, and we want to pass that on. But I personally believe that it's everybody needs to make that decision themselves and cannot be forced or anything. So when we, when the woman come to us, there's no obligations for them to do anything, and we help them if they decide for uh, Jesus or not. Um, like they can choose if they come to services or if they don't come to services. Um, that's up to them. One thing that we see, though, is the girls that are opening themselves up to God and starting a journey with him personally are the ones that are more likely to stay out of it because they don't try it out of their own strengths. Mm. But if we just try, you know, to change behavior, for example, that doesn't work. It helps them maybe for a couple of weeks, they can play it. And I think we see that with a lot of women coming to us. Um, They try to imitate us. They try to behave Christian, even though they are not, just because they think that's how they get accepted. And it's a little bit what they are doing with all their customers. They behave in a way that the men would expect of them so that they get the most out of them. But we try and it takes years for them to come away from that whole pattern, to find themselves, to find they are worthy in themselves. And then then if they set up a relationship with Jesus, they can develop more. Um, but it is a long process. It's nothing that can come overnight. Um, mm. And they need to learn it. And like we, you know, um, our relationship as Christians has not developed like, you know, when we spend the uh, pray to prayer and we were just there in the best relationship. No, it's a relationship. So that means it costs work. It costs time. And we have to get going with that. Wow. Steffi maybe has also oh. some things. Go ahead, Steph. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Ruth, that there's always the danger that the woman, uh, yeah, just come to us and quickly say they become Christians just because they think that's what's expected of them. But for us, it's very, very important that uh, that we are like Jesus. Jesus didn't offer help for people uh, because he, be, yeah, because they needed to believe in him. And if if you don't believe in him, uh, he he wouldn't offer help anymore. So so it's really, really important for us uh, when we when we do the interview with the woman, we share with them we are a Christian organization, but their faith is their faith. They're invited to join all our, our things at Tema, our devotions, our church services, everything. We give them a Bible, but what they make out of it is their decision. It is their lives. And uh, yeah, just recently we had one woman who came to us and she, on the, fir- in the evening of the first day, she came to me and she said, uh, I want to become a Christian now. Can I pray with you? <laughs> and I said, oh, uh, okay. Uh, and I was really speechless. And I asked her what she thinks a Christian is, why she beca- wants to become a Christian. And very quickly, I found out it was just, she heard in, in uh, she heard that all the others are Christians. We are a Christian organization. So she, she thought, this is the best thing I can do now to say I'm part of them. This is the way to say I belong. I belong here. 
And I, I assured her this is not how it works. And I said to her, you know, I'm really happy if you want to become a Christian, but uh, yeah, um, let's just, yeah, you get to know what it means first, you know, just take time and you can come, become a Christian anytime. So just for the next couple of weeks, we, yeah, she joined devotions and she had a lot of talks and counseling. She asked a lot of questions about who Jesus is. And uh, yeah, that's how we do it. We don't just, uh, yeah, have somebody uh, pray with us right the moment they, they say they want to become a Christian because it's really important that mm -hmm. they make a real decision. Amen. Amen. That's a great question. Uh, let me give my, my two cents, my, my, my expertise. I mean, my doctorate on my wall from Southern Methodist is in church development evangelism. So, uh, evangelism, my, my, the definition that gave me an AL in my best paper as Southern Methodist, it's, we get one, we get one Ivy leaf. That's it. But it, it, it's basically Spurgeon's definition that evangelism is about one beggar telling another beggar where to find food. You know, you, you can't make the other beggar eat, but you can tell them what's happened to me and what's happened to you. And if they see something authentically in you, then they'll have a desire to go get it for themselves. And then if they get it and experience that, they'll go tell another beggar how to, where to find it. We'll share. Uh, but when you take the word evangelism, and, and Steffi, I think you would agree, Daniel, that there are many people that come in there and they go, hey, you need to get saved. Right now, I'm going to pray for you right here on the street and you're changed and walk away from this. They're not dealing with the trauma. They're not dealing with the counseling. They're not dealing with the fact that they're <laughs> they're trapped in a world and they've been victimized. And, and maybe, they, maybe they even woke up for a minute, by the way. But now, as you said in one episode, they're jet lagged. So now you're going to leave them jet lagged sitting on the street. That That's not biblical. Evangelism, by definition, is evangel it's being the word of god it's an angel it's speaking the love of god to people as steffi said evangel you're acting as an angel of the lord and so you're bringing his love you're bringing his goodness and the alternative to that is evangelism should always be loving it should always be the good news it should be authentic witness and and taking time with people to move there we didn't get lost overnight we've been lost our whole lives we're not going to get saved in an instant we get saved over having a real authentic experience through other people connected to christ and then seeing that that's valid and then we get attracted to it the counter to that what you see when people are forcing agendas and forcing uh, christianization that what we might call imperialization of our faith in the old days what we call that in theology, the word is evangelism is healthy. Proselyting is anti-health. Proselyting is when you construct and constrict people to do the faith the way you tell them to do the faith and mm -hmm. to do to get services, you'll need to do this, 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 and this. Yes, I believe when somebody needs to get saved, the Bible says, Romans 10, 9, they need to confess their faith and they need to believe in Christ. But it says confess with their mouth, believe in their heart. You cannot do that through proselyting. Somebody may give you lip service and go, I prayed, but you can never make their heart and their mind truly believe that without them having authentic understanding relationship. There are many churches out there that go out and they offer services, they offer bonuses and fabulous prizes. And if you'll just do this, Genuflex, proselyte you, we'll, we'll call you a notch in the kingdom of God. That is not evangelism. That is, that is, that is biblical. Let me use this word. I'm sorry. Your dad's not gonna like this biblically Shanghai somebody into the faith and it will not last. It's a seed that's scattered in the parable on hard rock that as soon as the sun comes out, it'll burn it up and it'll never take root because it's not of God. Good seed to sprout, to be, to see these girls come to faith is because they are around good soil. They're around good people. And over time they're nurtured. The water of Christ, the spirit of Christ begins to grow. And next thing you know, the girls are not just asking questions. They're experiencing the goodness of God and it takes root in them and they desire it of their own free will. Everything that's not evangelism. And it's other than that would be what I call proselyting. And that is not of the Lord. So does that work for you guys, Daniel and Steffi? I'm just using a lot of theological terms, so, but. Yes, I mean, that, let me maybe share like what our goal is in our area. We want to be known as a place where the girls can come and get help. Amen. And for example, in our street where we have our outrage center, there are about six to 700 girls working in that little street. And they all know who we are. They know we are Christian and they know they can get help. Three months ago, we got a new woman and she came to Patea, was tricked and was supposed to start a job in a restaurant, ended up in a bar. And when they told her that she had to prostitute herself, she ran away from the bar. She broke through the guys, ran out on the street and ran and ran and ran. 
And at some stage, she stopped at a bar and asked the girls for help. And that was in our street. And the girl said, oh, if you really need help, you need to go over there. It's a hair saloon called Tamer Center and they can help you. And I think that is a good example, like what we want to be known for. We want to help the girls when they're in need. There is no condition. There is not, oh, you have to do this or you have to do that. No, we just want to help them. And everything else they have to do in their heart and God will work it at the right time with the girls. Do all the girls that come to us become Christians? No, by far not. Um, some do, and we are happy for each one of them. But each one of them hears the good news, and they have the chance to decide for themselves. And, and the, I think the most important thing is they've experienced authentic Christianity. Whether right. they come to Christ now mm -hmm. or not, that will be imprinted in their mind. And as yeah. they go along their life, you know, yeah. in, in evangelism, you have a chart called the Maslow's chart. And Maslow's chart has negative 10 and plus 10 and a zero line. Negative 10 is absolute, total, complete atheist. It's anti-God to the max. Plus 10 is, let's just say Mother Teresa, you're the most holy person known other than Jesus Christ. You're plus 10. Zero is the line where you cross and invite Christ into your heart. And if you've got somebody that's coming from a culture of Buddhism, a culture of of outside faith. They've never heard about this. It may take years for them to experience authentic Christianity, to go through healing and to see enough authenticness to move to a point where they might come to a zero. The biggest thing that we can do as Christians, whether it's at Tamar Center, whether it's right here in the United States, because everything we've said and Ruth has said about doing this real and authentic and not Shanghai or not uh, proselyting people is true for witnessing here in the United States. It's true for doing work here in ministry on the streets. It's true there. What needs to happen is we need to move people forward and give them an example that moves them from that negative 10 and maybe they come in at negative five, whatever. Our goal is to move them one notch closer to where they can make their own decision, having given, having been given a good presentation. And in due season, I believe good seed sowed will, will reap good harvest. But in the bottom line, every one of us have the right to choose or not to choose. Yeah, I think you know, even like being in the um, mission world for a while, and I, I shared this in one of my podcasts of, uh, we did a lot of studying of, you know, people who, uh, particularly like missionaries going into countries that they weren't from, trying to um, really like convert, I guess was like a lot of the uh, focus was like a conversion rather than- The moment of conversion, sharing. the zero, yeah. the, the, zero, moment mo the it, zero yeah. moment. But also like- the harm that was done um, in in the different projects or the different things that uh, were done that, you know, like I said, were uh, maybe, maybe well-intentioned, but uh, didn't you, have the fall. You can through. get a forced zero moment, which means nothing because right. it's not real. You can also sometimes, it, when people go out looking for zero moments, when you, people give their, they, they give their life to Christ, it may be inauthentic. What if it is authentic and you force it? And they were really ready, and then they found out that all you're interested in is a notch in your belt. Right, and they, I and I think that's like the challenge, at least, um, in this field, is because I like, especially being a Christ uh, follower, like I my hope really does come from Him, and there's a deep seated hope in that. Um, and so, like at some point, you want to share that hope with someone for that hope of heal and that like right. true healing and that deep healing. Um, but when you share that in a way that's um, more focused on you, will you become like this conversion? Well, it's focused and, on it becomes focused on the person doing on the evangelism, the, and not, sharing, not on the person yeah. you're loving, and and not yeah. and not for the purpose of hope and healing. Well, and then you're it, then you are basically exploiting yeah. the person. And it person becomes you're trying, Yeah, yeah it, it very it does, much so. And it's not love, and it's not hope, it's not. and it's not healing. You can actually push people back away, absolutely, and do more damage to somebody in the future that might authentically have built a good relationship. It makes yeah. it harder. And, yeah. and I think, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and I think sometimes like. I mean, not necessarily even in this context, but like, you know, you, you grow and you get to know someone and you really help them over a period of time. And then suddenly like you bring that up all of a sudden and, and then people can feel like that's why you were here this whole time. Like it's just for that. And mm -hmm. I think that's why it's like super important to be clear from the beginning. Right. Like this is who we are. This is what, why we're doing it, but we're not going to make you do anything. Like right. you have to ask us 
you know, right. like we would be glad if you did. Yeah, but you're not obligated to this. We just hope you. Yeah, because sometimes yeah. I think you can feel like you're blindsiding someone, right. like after you know giving them all of this. And this, this is not just in also. Tamar. This is not just this no, is not happening. At all. We see this so often oh, around yeah. the world. Don't you agree? Hey, let me let me ask you guys next round of questions here. Hear a lot too. Great, great, great question from Ruth and guys. Great answer. I put up on the screen here this Asian region anti-trafficking conference you guys went to in 2019 we, we kind of want to know in the bigger picture not just thailand but the asiatic region the, the whole area the the asia pacific area what kind of collaborative work are you doing with other thailand other countries in the thailand circle what kind of partnership and training as far as awareness of other organizations cross-pollination uh, cross support what are you guys doing to work collaboratively is there collaborative work and is it helpful beneficial tell us about that Yes, so the Asia Region um, Conference has been started a couple of years ago, and we are normally going there every year. It was arranged by Chapdai, what's a big coalition of uh, anti-trafficking work in Cambodia and not for sale Australia. And it brought together, we were about 150 people uh, each year from many different organizations all over Southeast Asia, um, India, and we just spent a week together in Bangkok, just discussing things, talking about things, not just sex trafficking, but labor trafficking, um, bride trafficking, what's becoming a bigger issue, especially out of China or into China, basically, um, and things like that. And me personally, I love working together with as many organizations as possible um, because the work is so huge. We don't have all the answers. We have very few answers but together we can help each other. Um, and, you know, for example, we had one woman with us um, where we couldn't help anymore. Um, she decided to do some bad stuff, went back into drugs and things like that. And we realized that it wasn't working with us. She felt bad towards us. And so we linked her up with another organization about an hour's drive away from Patia, where she's now and she's thriving. She had a new environment and it worked. And so we all need to work together. We are linked up with many organizations in Bangkok, um, what's the closest to us, where we share ideas, where we share training with. Um, we are working with A21 together um, in partnership with different things. And we are trying to learn as much as possible by keeping up with ideas and trends that are going on. I'm also working for Freedom Business Alliance, what is an alliance of uh, businesses that are employing survivors. Um, and trying to make business with it. Because you probably can imagine that if you work with people that have come out of deep trauma, um, they are not the most stellar workforce that you would if you would hire, you know, Harvard people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Just say it like that. So, and we are working together and uh, FBA has just started in the States, the first um, wholesale um, platform where people can go and buy for their shops lot of huge range of products all made from survivors and where the money goes back into the work helping more people coming out what is really exciting and i think we all need to work together as much as possible learn from each other um, we are not all the same we are not all from the same face background uh, we have different ideas but i think there's something that we can learn from each other and just if we continue to work together we can make a much, much bigger difference. Oh, that's amazing. That's awesome. just, just great, great answer. Uh, let, let, let me, I want to jump gears here a little bit and get a little bit of other information out here. Um, I, I want to, I want to just tell a little example of story and then I'm going to transition to another piece. Daniel, you mentioned in podcast uh, three of this story, uh, go back and listen to episode three. How do we get in front of the crisis? Um, one of the thing is to not just deal with the victims of sex trafficking, but to deal with the perpetrators as well. You mentioned, and I appreciate that because we, a lot of times in this, it's easy to think of the girls on this side because of what's happening. But you've also mentioned, uh, there is some sad thing. And I, I agree with this. I, I, when I'm there, I, I spend a lot, what's the coffee place I go to right by the Adelphi, the really nice place I like, what's the name of that again? Bacon brew. Uh, bacon brew. It's one of the finest coffee shops and pastry shops. It's like, it's like better than a Starbucks and great, got French food and good stuff, but go to bacon brew there. We go almost every morning and Beth and I have coffee breakfast and I do a lot of my meetings with my pastors there. It's a great place to go. They love the treat. And when you're there, 
in the morning, about 10, 30, 11 o'clock, all these old lonely men start showing up and they all have their coffee clubs. And by, by 11 o'clock, they're all there. They've drug in because they've been out all night. And these are old men. I, I'm 54. I know I look a little older, but but these are like 60, 70 year old men. They drag in and you can begin to hear them all tell their war stories. And w one of the things they tell you is who died last night. Somebody, Johnny died. They found him dead this morning. Uh, the, you know, you know, so they, and then the girl that he was living with, the Thai girlfriend, uh, she owns the apartment and she's already sold all his stuff, took all his money and the family's coming to get him, but his accounts are cleaned out. You begin to hear war stories of what's happened. You hear about the guys changing girls. And then you hear about the guys, as Dan, you talked about episode three, talking about the fact that, uh, uh, they're not going home for Christmas. They're not going home for Thanksgiving. Uh, their kids don't want to talk to them. Their wife doesn't exist anymore. Uh, they have no relationship with their children, nobody to go to. And it, the longer you hear those guys talk, the sadder and the lonely and the more pathetic it becomes because you realize they have no life whatsoever of any meaning. And you mentioned they're all just kind of empty. And you, the longer you listen to it day in, day out, it just... You know, it's just sad. And I think there's a lot of people there that think, a lot of people here, say, hey, they mentioned groups doing tour groups, wanting to go there to have the rage over there. You get over there and you find out at the end of that pot, it's not good. There are girls there that have also learned how to work the other way. They'll pull the guys in and, and clean out their bank accounts and you'll wake up with nothing and they'll be into all kinds of things. So it's just, there's a lot of lonely people out there. So these people that are victimizing people, in some ways, I don't want to say they're victims themselves. You guys will have to help me with that. But but they are certainly they're certainly victims of their own making because a lot of them have isolated themselves through their behaviors and their methods and their plans. They have nobody at home, no kids that care about them. They didn't develop real relationships, and they're there trying to live in fantasy world. And actually, they know it's not real. They know it's not real. And so if all of you guys think it's romantic, go to Patti and do this. At the bottom of that barrel, you'll be an old man sitting alone with no legacy, nobody to really speak into, and really, really just people waiting on you to die so they can take your stuff. So it's not a good thing. It's not a good lifestyle. It's not romantic. It's a really, really sad thing. Do you guys see that a lot? Is that Does that resonate with you guys, Steffi and Daniel? Yes, that's what we see regularly, yeah. It's so sad. It breaks my heart that people don't have a place, they don't have family, somebody to care for them and to find out they're dead. And some of the family doesn't find out for weeks and months that they're dead and gone. Sometimes the girls leave and the body just lays there. One guy said they, the body was in there for until they smelt it. And so, you know, just, it, it's not as romantic as you think it is. It's really a sad, sad thing. So yeah, I, I maybe wouldn't call them victims, but maybe like, I think from the standpoint of the gospel, like broken, like there's brokenness there. Yeah. That it needs healing. That's and a very better word. I yeah. think that that, in that we can find compassion for like grace. Um, yeah. but I think, you know, there's obviously a difference between like they grace need Jesus and consequence Christ. and right. they can coexist and like yeah. there can be responsibility expected of people, but also we can have compassion and, um, but they the, also, and it, see the bondage that is there. Yeah. Sorry. Oh no. They also, I mean, they don't exist in a vacuum. Like they exist in a system that like not only encourages this and like there, obviously there's a whole business for this, but one that like, you know, I think the culture around sex for men is like you get applauded or at least you think you will get applauded for right. doing things like this. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's a much bigger problem than, yeah. than the individual who chooses to go and do that, though. Obviously, yes. they're at fault. Like it exists a, within a culture that perpetuates. But it, it is a it is a straw rabbit. It's really it's a false it's a false applause. There's of nothing, course. there's nothing yeah. to be proud of. There's yeah, nothing definitely to be a cultural. Like, I mean, like I completely agree. It's not just like individuals who separately just suddenly decided to, you know, like we all get there. I see somehow. guys coming out of the, the PP massage across from our hotel. We see the bus loads of Indians go in there. The Indians are tour, Chinese tours. They go in there and then we see the guys coming out waddling like they're the big man on campus. There's no big man on campus. When you go and exploit somebody for your own sick, perverted pleasure, mm -hmm. you're not a big man on campus you're not honoring what god's called you to do in the gift that you have of a life that is not something that i mean yeah i think the word is i i people like that need to find christ and find real meaning in life as well and 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 god has grace for that yeah. but yeah. well and and even like yeah 
It's tough. It's a tough one. And, All right. And there's a, like addiction even that plays into that too. Absolutely. Because you can see that even within the church. So it's not even just like a. And I know a lot of them are called in it because of other things and decisions right. they've made. And there's, that's a whole good conversation. Let me jump into this here. I want to switch gears uh, with, we got about 10 minutes remaining here or so. And I want to start by talking about, I promised to talk about the partnership with Community Faith Church and, and, and how people can get involved in working with Tamar Center. One of the ways to get involved is to go with us. When, when COVID opens back up and it's all dead and done and we get ready to go back in there we always take teams 10 15 20 people we are dying to get back in there not dying in there but we, we're, we can't wait to get back into to the country to be with our churches to be with our friends there uh, we've got outreaches we want to do we want to partner with them to do things we take experts over there as well stephanie and them will tell you that they're always looking for people that have english skills counseling skills hairdressing skills we've taken all these things bakers restaurant uh nursery if you if you've got skills or gifts you can go with us on a trip you've musicians you're somebody that has a love for people you can go with us and you can help us paint a prison you can help us fix somebody's home up do some work in the new guest houses we would love to have you with us on a trip so you can always reach out to us at info at on the doc.org that's our email address uh cold will put it up there on the bottom of the screen and you can always email us and tell us i would be interested in a trip and we'll vet you out find out if you're really serious about going with us and, and we'll, we'll, we'll we'll want to find out about your your bona fides whether you're really connected to a church you're really a child of god we're not taking you on a free trip to some place it's it's not exotic what we go do we go work hard but if you're interested in going we'd love to have you ruth we i the next trip i will definitely <laughs> tell you come join us thank you yeah yeah, yeah. and we'll do the lingo we'll do the layover in singapore perfect we'll you go home pick for me up there we'll pick you up there no, i'm really yeah, sold on yeah so yeah, yeah. so but, but but to do that i want you to see how for a second i'm going to show you about a three minute video here a little bit of how our churches got started in 2015 working with uh tamar center working with hand to hand we kind of went in and went into some of the 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 the, in the soy six in the third row we also went into some of the slums around patia where the people live that fulfill this industry and we went and began to connect with them through faith in christ and we began to develop relationships that are today churches today pastored all by indigenous thai people from that region and now we've not only trained the first generation the first generation of pastors are now retraining the second generation let me show you the first generation real quick just take a look at their screen here in a second check out this video
right there. That's one of our Hands of Hope outreach teams, and we went out there and had a great time. We've got that's just one trip, just one trip. We've done many of those trips, and we would love to have you on one of those trips with us. Just reach out to info at onthedoc.org. We'd love to have you go. Daniel and Steffi are great hosts. They are wonderful. Margie Granger over there at uh, Hand to Hand. I put their pictures back up there. That team would love to have us back. So when things get better, we get through this COVID thing, we want to get back out there. We'd love to have you join us for that. And that's how you can get involved and go make a difference there. It's an amazing thing. Daniel and Steffi, is my room ready yet? I'm not, I'm not hearing your audio there. They're, they're turning your audio back on. Can you, can you hear us? We are, wait, we are working on it. Yeah, yeah, you're getting my room ready. I want a chocolate on the pillow or at least a nice piece of cake, that carrot cake. I'd like some carrot cake. Cake on a pillow sounds a little... I want that Pondot, dangerous. Pondot cake. Is pondot so, cake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Delicious. so good. Yeah. You do not find Pondot cake anywhere in the United States. I can't that's ever true. find it. Yeah. So, oh. so, so listen, uh, that's how you can get involved. And Daniel and Steffi have this incredible building project. I want to re-highlight that one more time, how you can get involved there. Hey, one of the ways you can go, I shared this earlier. If you're somebody out there that's an English teacher, counseling, uh, hairdresser, nursery teacher, bakery and restaurant worker, and you have a heart for God and you would like to go work for an extended period of time, you could reach out to Steffi at uh, www.tamarcenter.org through the web. You can email her at info at tamarcenter.org and they can talk to you about how you could come over and be a short-term, long-term, medium-term uh, missionary. There is a work, there's stuff to do to do that, but you don't just snap your fingers and go do that. But if you would like to go serve under a, a proven ministry, you can get in the trenches and go do something. We went there one year. We sent my daughter about 40 days ahead of time and she did a whole project that summer and then we came and joined her and it was great. And she had an incredible experience and uh, they, they can take good care of you. Uh, they are working on a new facility. You see the new building to the right. They own the building to the left in the picture there. They're trying to buy this new building to the right. They got a contract on it and they're going to be expanding their work, their, their cafe, their restaurant, their training facility and everything. And we are excited about what this building is going to mean to the future. Tamar, they have 22 years of doing incredible work there of changing people's lives for Jesus Christ. And you know what? Uh, I want to see them do another 20 years. And I want to see them kick it up. And I want to see COVID and the shutdown be an opportunity to expand the heart of God right there there in Patia. So you guys, I just want to tell everybody out there listening, you can go help with this. I'm going to put up global globalgiving.org and you can search for Tamar Center and you can find a way there to give to the new building project, to two or three other projects they got going on. Check those all out. You can also send a PayPal gift to info at tamarcards.com. That's another way in which you can give. There's just amazing ways in which you can serve. I want to show you one more video here. Uh, Daniel sent this over literally. It's fresh off the press. Daniel, what's the lady's name that does this vi video? Uh, Nella does the video. No, no, oh, you mean yeah, the other one, uh, March. March. Uh, it's name. Her name's March, and her and she's going to do a video. And she's there. She has a vision for this guest house and taking this to the next level. And she's been a big sport for you guys. She did this incredible video that will help you get a picture of what they're trying to accomplish with this building. Because if you want to invest and be a part of this, this is a good way to go over and be a part of the training, go part and 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 send money and resources to help with that. Let's just check check out this incredible video. Watch it real quick it's not a long video uh we'll watch it for here just like uh just for my sound guy over here it is only going to be just a like uh uh just a few minutes here we go good day everyone thank you for joining me my name is marge garen and i wanted to come today and i wanted to do a happy day because this week we took the so the for sale sign off the building we are so excited that we are taking the next step in, the, uh, in able to purchase this building. But let me take a step back. And I wanted to tell you my story. In 2017, God gave me an assignment. That assignment was to open a guest house that would teach vocational alternatives to those women who were trapped in human trafficking. He didn't tell me where, he didn't tell me when, but he did tell me the name, and the name is Tamar Guest House. Fast forward to 2021, and we just purchased the building. It is so exciting. I am so excited, and so is the rest of the team. And I wanted to thank you if you've had a portion with that. But we do have a ways to go. And 
we have not only some finances to raise, but we also have to create our vocational track. Currently, Tamar Center teaches six vocational alternatives to the women who come out of the bars. Our goal with the guest house is to teach six additional vocational alternatives, all centered around the hospitality industry. As many of you know, Patia is a hot tourist bed normally when there isn't COVID around, but it is, we have lots and lots of tours here. And so we believe that utilizing the vocations in the tourist industry will make our women hireable. It will also make them able to start small businesses to support their families and themselves. We do have a ways to go. We have some funds to still raise we were able to purchase the building with the funds we've raised and a loan from uh, an interest free loan and the internal one. And so we now need to raise some funds for repayment of that loan and the next steps, which is renovation, furnishing, setting up the training points, and having a grand opening. Thank you for joining me today. May God bless you. And if you want to donate to us and help us with the next steps, you can see the link at the bottom of the page. Thank you. All right. We want to tell you about that again. Go, go to globalgiving.org, search for Tamar Center, look for the number one project, new building project. If you don't want to do that, you can do a PayPal gift at info at tamarcards.com. If you don't even want to do that, you just want to come see Pastor Troy, reach out to me at info at on the doc.org. I would be glad to work with us. We have an account there. We can help you transfer the money through to them as well. You can make that donation through our Hands of Hope Foundation, and we'd be glad to transfer that gift and give you US 501c3 credit and make sure it gets there. And we'll actually go there and take pictures and we'll we'll take you with us and you can go hang out and do ministry there so we like people that want to get in the trenches so there's lots of ways to give the gift daniel and Steffi, uh, are you excited about the future of this building what this means for what you're doing very oh yes excited. very i am too i am too you guys last round of questions we're going to wrap up here in just a second i'm just going to check around the horn here anybody got a follow-up question or anything you want to throw in i'm trying to decide if i should ask it after or right now no that's okay if you if you want um, to go so for it. This is uh, just from my experience in Bangkok. Um, there were, you know, definitely different populations serving in the bar, um, in the sex industry there, outside of just um, uh, women who were, you know, assigned that gender at birth. Um, is there, for like the trans population, is there any services like currently? Um, for that specific population in um, in Pattaya, or is that like is that a population that isn't working in the sex industry there? Like I saw, it was very prevalent in uh, Bangkok and Chiang Mai where I was, but I just didn't know if you like serve that population or if you please know enli please enlighten us on that one. This is going to be a very interesting answer. I can't wait to hear it. Okay, um, you're talking about the whole lady boys. Um, yeah, I know that that's what it's in, called there. It's we called don't necessarily, here. yeah. That's all that you yeah, get there. That's the only language. Good way of, yeah. That's the, what's called yeah. there. They call themselves lady yeah. boys. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm not 100% aware of all the right terms to use in the US right now because that is changing. So I just. Yeah, it's changing. It's in basically uh, men who are on the way to become women and are in the different stages of right. um, hormone treatment, surgeries, and everything. That's who I'm referring why, to, yes. And why they are in that process, um, they are selling themselves um, and are actually, in the moment, I would say it's one of the biggest growing um, demand for them, especially when they are at the bottom still men and at the top uh, already women, um, because kind of the customers like that they get the best of both worlds. And I think also because of the whole debates or talk about uh, homosexuality and everything in the West, a lot of people want to try what it is because everybody's talking about and they want to be able to share that they had the experience, but at the same time, they still feel, oh, they don't want to be branded 
with being like homosexual and so going with a lady boy is kind of um, a compromise and the best of two worlds for them. Lady boys itself, it's a very, very difficult um, situation because you are dealing on the one hand with the whole exploitation issues and abuse issues. And at the same time, you are dealing with people who are very vulnerable. Some have been raised as the different sex from their birth, from their parents directly. Like we had one um, young lady boy that we helped who was dressed from birth as a girl, even though he was a man by his parents because they wanted a girl um, and things like that. It's, it's very difficult and traumatic um, to work with them because they often have not much self-worth um, going through all of this, the hormonal treatments that they are taking are very hard on the body. And then at the same time, working in the sex industry is right. yeah, destroying them. Right. Um, we are helping uh, lady boys as well. We are working with them. They are almost every day in our hair saloon and things like that. But we are not specialized uh, right. in that. Um, it's You cannot really work with lady boys at the same time as when you work with a woman coming out of the industry, because yes, the abuse part is probably similar, but then the whole personal part is very different and they need very specialized treatment. And we are happy for an organization called Dong Nam in mm -hmm. Bangkok that we work in partnership with who are uh, very specialized in that and can help that. We had a number of lady going through our program, but to be very honest, it's a very difficult process and uh, challenging. For for a season, uh, one of our first pastors, uh, no longer with us at this point in time, but one of our first pastors at one of our churches was a lady boy. So it was very interesting being a pastor here and coming back and explaining to my people that the, the, one of our first pastors was was a lady boy. And you know, it gone, we'd gone far enough that you can't change that, but Christ had changed his life and 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 he had a testimony that was very powerful and so uh we were able to see god do a lot of amazing things through that so so i think god can use people at various stages in various ways and i'm i'm very thankful for the fact that they do do outreach to that and i'm even more grateful that you guys have identified the challenge that is and that there's organizations that are specializing in that work yeah. because it's it, yeah it's definitely something that's needed i think um across the board like lgbtq um a I know there's more letters that I'm missing, but um, it, I know that they are a higher risk um, for exploitation. By like several degrees. By a lot of degrees. By a lot of degrees. And, um, yes. uh, and on top of that, all of the um, challenges that come along with, with that uh, outside of exploitation too. Um, and, and so, yeah, I was just interested to see like if you guys offered services that marginalized um, community and they definitely so do. important and yeah. I think it's important that the church show up and um, love on that uh, population yeah. and I've seen quite a few there through their program over the years as well and I think the challenge of it sometimes keeps people from from doing anything like from offering services at all and I and, and that's why it was, it's really encouraging that you do that and um, Don Nam is amazing if you get the chance to talk to Celeste who is from that like mm. she's incredible really incredible. Yeah. So they they yes. primarily are in Bangkok, you said. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, they're in Bangkok, and Celeste is, I would say, the world's expert in this whole area because like she has dedicated one, right? her life to it. Yeah. yeah, she's really they're the, the only, only organization that the I really know one. that are yeah. completely focused on that group That's of people. Crazy. Well, I know even just like for like boys specifically, like there's not very many um, like in our field. It's very like focused on women generally yes. mm -hmm. but like i know of a group called a uh, black box international in dominican republic that focuses on boys but not necessarily the lgbtq community mm -hmm. and so it's yeah, yeah that's the, i didn't realize and i think people need to understand the scope of, of the, the lady boy situation especially in patia it, it's in bangkok it may be here here it is highly mixed into the entire lifestyle of Pattaya. I mean, and so bars will easily intermingle on one street and you can have, I mean, a high percentage. Would you agree, Daniel, Steffi, a very high percentage of lady boys working there in that industry as well there, correct? Oh yeah, and uh, a lot of the tourists only find out uh, in the hotel room that they 
have done a mistake or <laughs> and that and that leads to a whole nother victimization and a whole nother set of abuse and people being beaten I, I have seen it. I've been on the yeah, streets sure the next morning. I've always. been, and, and I know where the lady boys stand. They stand down by the water area, especially the ones that are, are, are working independent. And you will see the beat and the bruises on them from so where, where they, where they, you know, somebody thinks they got one thing and it was another thing and it ends up being abused or just that whole nature of that. There's just a whole nother realm there. I, I thank God that there's people out there doing great ministry. I hope God will put on people's hearts to look into that. And, and, you know, the bottom line is we are all children of God. And, and God has a plan for everybody. And I'm thankful that you guys are helping connect with people and then getting people the resources they need. Uh, Ruth, any, any last questions from you? I don't think so. All right. Okay. Daniel Steffi, you got any questions for us? No, we are just yeah. thankful for the opportunity to share with you guys. Thank you. And for looking forward for you coming and for looking. We need to go out again, fishing or yes, doing fishing. some beach lying or things like that. We got. We have <laughs> a lot of sharks for Troy. Though, no right? sharks. We, we might catch one, but he would uh, make me lose it. No, but but guys, <laughs> we appreciate your time and the time you've given to this. And we'll, we'll do more of these in the future because this has worked very, very well. And you guys have broken the record. So Tamar Center is our first Zoom guest, mm-hmm. international Shane. guest. Yeah, there you go. Donkey Shane. There you go. We, we appreciate you guys so much what you're, and what you're doing and, and all i want to know my last question here's the last question uh steffi is my room ready <laughs> oh yeah i already put your oreos on your pillow oh i'm I, as soon as as soon as that nasty covid has gone in the name of jesus christ get gone so we can get back over there i want my oreos before uh, somebody gets into them i know one and two they'll be trying to eat the oreos so hey god bless you guys thank you so much let me let me just kind of wrap us up here uh you can find out more about on the dock at on the dock.org you can email us at info at on the dock.org to find more if you'd like to find out about how to go with us on a trip Email us and tell us you're interested. We'll let you know. We don't know when. We don't control when. Only when the government's let us start flying again, we can get something planned. But I promise you, within months of that happening, we'll go and do that. And thank you for joining us. You can find us on many platforms, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, also Google Podcasts, Facebook, Roku, Rumble, and SermonNet. And please give us a shout out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Telegram. We would love, if, you, if you're interested in some of these books or information, give a shout out. We'll make sure we get you that information. There'll be lots of information and links. Don't forget that movie, A Love Betrayed. Dot org go check that out it's incredible and when you find us on our platforms when you find our social media make sure you subscribe hit like notify and share this with other people and we always want you to become a patreon partner or sponsor uh, with us that'll help us do more shows of this nature and we always want you to come if you're in this area don't have a church home we'd love to have you at community faith church be a part of our church family if you're looking for one 10 a.m on sunday 6 30 on on wednesdays uh we have a virtual campus at coftv.com you can watch us there or you can go to our facebook or youtube channel under community faith church we'd love to have you here and again once again Steffi and daniel thank you so much we just want to wave bye to you we love you guys god bless you and, and, and yeah we'll talk to you off the air here in just a minute but again thank you for your time i want to thank ruth for being here ruth you have been such a blessing to to the work that we're doing here and helped us just have a much thicker and richer conversation and your, your gift in this has been incredible. So thank, thank you for you. joining us. And Haley, what a blessing. The mosaicinitiative.org. Check out her ministry and organization. And, 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 and someday soon, you're going to see great work by Ruth in this world. She's going to open. I hope her work enlightens people and kind of shares that. I can't wait to read what yeah. she will write about uh, anti-human trafficking and the U.S. church's response. Hey, out there, let's do the right thing. Do it the, do it the godly way. Let's make sure we're evangelizing people and not proselyting or shanghaiing them. Let's make sure that we're really good examples and not just a good example over there. Let's live lives over here and make sure we're never exploiting anybody else because Jesus died already to set us all free. There's no reason to put anybody back in bondage again. I'm Pastor Troy, and we're here on the dock. We look forward to having you back. Back soon. We'll see you soon. God bless.